All right, so welcome to the Introduction to Parametric Design with Grasshopper. This webinar will introduce you guys to the fundamental concepts and essential skills necessary for effectively designing with Grasshopper for Rhinoceros 3D. We'll cover concepts such as object attributes and parameters, data types, data structures, and designing and thinking with algorithms. We'll be sure to leave plenty of time during the webinar to discuss some of the points um, that are a little more interesting about recent updates to Grasshopper 9, as well as um, be able to answer any questions um, that you guys might have come up as we move along. So some of the topics, again, that we'll cover is what is parametric design and when is it useful? So what are those fundamental concepts and essential skills necessary to know? What's an algorithm? and how can I use one to explore my ideas? So defining as well as executing parametric design solutions. And the path to success. How do we store and access data? Working with lists and data trees. And now what? Using Grasshopper in my creative workflow. File layout, organization, and how to get the most out of modularity. I'd like to give a special Thank you um, to McNeil and Associates for their sponsorship of this free event. Be sure to check out their website um, up at the top right of the screen at rhino3d.com. I'm Ronnie Parsons, and with me today is Gil Akos, and we are Studio Mode. We are a multidisciplinary design practice based in Brooklyn, New York that consists of um, three interrelated sub-entities, open, lateral, and design. Open is uh, what this initiative is all about. It's a share source kind of an initiative consisting of a web repository for the creative use of design technology, a series of monthly webinars, as well as bi-monthly workshops, which are hosted here in our studio. Lateral um, is a, is a a service which offers laser and knife CNC cutting services, in addition to design consultation and bespoke parametric tool creation. We really try to help um, various types of artists, designers, architects, etc., cetera, um, make their ideas into a reality. And design is really uh, just that. It's our own design um, work. And at the top right, you can see studiomode.nu is the link to our web page. So this is a uh, mode lab, um, and here you can see a couple of recent workshops that we did um, at our studio here in uh, Greenpoint, Brooklyn, the patterning lab, as well as the nonlinear lab with um, Skylar Tibbetts, guest instructor. And be sure to uh, connect with us on Facebook. Uh, you can see here facebook.com backslash studio mode dot mode lab. If you'd like to uh, give us a thumbs up or post a couple of comments, we'd be more than happy to uh, uh, reply back to you. So a couple of issues regarding the uh, webinar administration, uh, specifically infrastructure regarding the webinar, is we will be recording and distributing this webinar later as a series of shorter videos for you uh, to be able to come back to and reference in the future as well as the PDF document that we'll be using during today's session will be shared um, in the coming month as a reference uh, for you all. You should have received an email with a link to the webinar source files. These files are for your reference. We will be using them today, um, but we will be building all of the files from scratch. Both Gil and I are, connect are conducting the webinar simultaneously, so I will be presenting and Gil will be answering technical questions on the fly and redirecting any relevant topical questions for me to address to the group um, as we see multiple people asking the same question. So the idea here is that we really want to provide a live experience for you um, as a, an attendee and uh, kind of make it seem more like a workshop rather than just a webinar. So, Grasshopper. Grasshopper is a node-based algorithm editor integrated with Rhino 3D's modeling tools. What it allows you to do is to define logical relationships between multiple design parameters that define a parametric model. 
here at the bottom right, you can see in icon format what that kind of parametric model might look like. A couple of nodes connected to another object using something which, we re which is referred to as wires. Now, a parametric model, then, is really a model wherein the parts of a design relate and change in a coordinated way, as, de as defined by the various parameters and dependencies stated by you. This is kind of the typical parametric uh, model, where you might see a couple of shapes connected to form a lock, and then sections, for instance, to be able to represent that parametric relationship in a slightly different way. Now if we bounce over to Rhino, one of the first things you're going to need to do is type in Grasshopper. When you do that, Grasshopper will open. And down here at the bottom, you'll want to double check that you are using the most recent version, 9.0012. You can also get to that by going to help and about. We'll be using 9.0012. Now, back to parametric modeling for a moment. When we're talking about a parametric model, what we're really talking about are parameters. And in the most general sense, a parameter is a factor that helps to define the overall limits and performance of a system. Here we can see two instances or states of a parametric model where the differing shapes are really a byproduct of changes in the parameters which define the overall form. You might notice some of the values are rendered here in green or red rather and blue showing which are actually shared across multiple inputs. A change for instance to the value in R1 would result in a very different kind of effect when the circle scales up along the edges. You zoom in a little bit closer, you might be able to see that there are a few more relationships here or something called constraints that are really important to the way in which this model is constructed. For instance, you may notice that there's a 120 degree angular constraint which is governing where the major uh, axes for geometry creation are located in the parametric model. So working parametrically is a very interesting way to begin to think about design. One of the things that is really important to understand as we begin to move into a parametric modeling environment is how to understand how data flows. Now, when we're creating things in a parametric environment, we're not only defining objects as geometry, but also as data. So we'll be sure to focus on how that works and how you can begin to tackle design processes by thinking through how the data might flow in the model. The second issue to think about as we begin to move into a parametric environment is that any problem can really be broken down into a series of very manageable parts. So we're going to have to think, before we even start, how to divide our problem into a series of parts that we can begin to execute step by step. Working parametrically also requires you to begin to think a little bit more abstractly about things, as well as beginning to think mathematically. And lastly, begin to think about design through an algorithmic approach. Here at the bottom left, you can see something which is referred to as a driver diagram. It's also referred to as a law curve diagram. But essentially what it is, is a two-dimensional drawing which represents the various types of geometrical constraints in place in a parametric model. To the right, you'll notice that there are a series of variations on what the output of this parametric model might be. Each one of those states, as they're referred to as, is really a byproduct of just the change in the diagram that we see at the bottom left. So 
So thinking algorithmically. Well, let's talk about an algorithm for a moment. Now, an algorithm is really just a set of rules that precisely defines a sequence of operations. For instance, as we're beginning to develop something like a law curve diagram or a driver diagram, here we might think about what are the various steps that we might need to take in order to be able to draw the ultimate outline curve that we see rendered in dark black. As we begin to take the next step and think about how that curve might be displaced in Z, we might have another rule that defines what parameters change. Those changes are reflected here in the lofted surface and then in the contoured floor plate model that we see on the right. So a few things to remember that are really critical to parametric design is that the parameters of a particular design are what are being declared, not its shape. Now that's a pretty big difference between the way in which more traditional modes of design development might occur. For instance, in your sketchbook, you might begin to sketch out what something might look like, right? But in a parametric model, the process is very explicit. So not only what it will look like is important, but what are the relationships that govern what it might look like? Now, because the process is explicit, you really have to have an idea about where you're going, as well as how you might get there before you even begin modeling. So having a very good understanding and a strong foundation in what the various parts of an object, like geometry, might be, will afford you a lot more possibilities before you begin to parametrically, or uh, before you begin to parametric model. So for instance, understanding how a curve, like a circle, is constructed will ensure that you know how to begin to draw the circle once you're in the grasshopper environment. Now the various inputs, processing, as well as the desired results in this planning process are what are referred to then as algorithms. 